Welcome to section 8, Machine Learning in Real Time. In the previous two sections we started our journey toward building a streaming sentiment analysis solution using natural language processing and Spark Streaming. In this section we will finish this journey. This section will be split in three parts across five videos. In the first video we will explore the Twitter API and learn how we can use it to stream tweets in real time. Then in videos 2 and 3 we will focus on understanding Spark Streaming, how it works, how to manage streams and how to convert between static and streaming applications. And finally, we will round off this section by putting all that we have learned and all that we have prepared together and assembling our real-time sentiment analysis solution. Welcome to the video, Fetching Data from Twitter. In this video, we will be preparing for dealing with real-time Twitter data by familiarizing ourselves with how to fetch that data in real time from the Twitter API. So let's get right to it. So you head over to developer.twitter.com and once you're logged in, you go to your username and you click on the drop down on apps. This will take you to the app interface. In the app interface, you see all the apps that you have registered. So if you have not already registered an app like I have here, you click on create an app that pulls up this window. And here you have to fill in some information, things like an app name and a description and a URL and a few other fields. So look through them, fill them in as required. So once you're done with that, you click on create and that will create yourself a Twitter app. For the purpose of this video, I've already done this. So if you have created an app, you click on details. This opens the window for all the app details. When you go to keys and tokens, you can see here there's consumer API keys and access token and access token secrets. These are important for you to be able to use the Twitter API. These are what you're going to have to fill in inside of the Twitter application that we're going to be dealing with from our lab environment. So let's head over to our lab environment and go to a mastering big data analytics with PySpark folder. In here, we're going to go to section eight and specifically the Twitter app. So in this folder, you see there's four files. One is a notebook that I've created that we're going to be covering in a moment. It's called twitterapp.ipynb. And then there's an init file that we're going to just ignore. This is just there for Python purposes. Then there's a secrets.py and a twitterdata.zip. So that, let me start by explaining what twitterdata.zip does. So this file I've put in here in case you're unable to actually provide API credentials, what I've just showed in the Twitter side of things. If you aren't able to do that, you can actually follow along the rest of the course by taking the zip file and unpacking it in a destination folder of your choice. So this makes it that you have Twitter data available to you, even though you might not have the credentials to provide them on the fly. First, let's look at the secrets.py. This is the file where you're going to be putting in your consumer key and secret and your access token and access secret. So if you've just followed the steps that I showed where you create your own Twitter API credentials, you can go and fill them in right here. And now let's check out this notebook. This is a little notebook I created to be able to easily interact with the Twitter API. So in the Twitter API, so what I'm not going to do is explain the Twitter API. There's a lot of documentation available on that. Of course, you can study it when you want to. In any way, you can use this script here to be able to interact with the Twitter API. The thing that you need are some credentials and the credentials that are necessary are stored in the secrets pi file. So once you've set everything up in your secrets.py, what you'll see here is a few settings. One is the destination of your data, so the output path. In this case, I'm setting it in our datasets folder and I'm generating a new one called Twitter. And then we can set a query. So that's a hashtag or a phrase or a word of what we actually want to grab out of Twitter. And you can also control about how many messages from Twitter to get, because obviously you don't want to overburden your own system. So that's an important thing to do. So for this example, I set the query to sunny, since it's a sunny day today. And I said that I want 500 messages out of Twitter. So you can set it to any integer number. So if you want only 50 messages, you want only five messages, or you want a thousand, it's fine. So I'm not going to tell too much about what's happening in the script, but basically it is just making a connection to the Twitter API uh, URL, which you can see down here using those secrets. And what we're doing is making sure that the tweet is valid. So that it's actually loadable in JSON because it can happen that it's not like that. So if that's the case, we just skip it. I'm not doing anything special there. And then we're just writing the output to a disk. So this is a, very, very, very simple data producer, since the one thing about Spark is that it is a data subscriber. So Spark is not able to generate its own data. It needs to get it from somewhere, but we'll focus on Spark in a moment. So let's make sure we grab out our 500 tweets regarding Sunny Redder. So I'm going to run this and you should start seeing the streams of tweets coming in. There we go. So we have one tweet, two tweets, four tweets. Yeah. So this is going. So while this is running, I'm going to go and navigate to the output folder, which was in data sets and then Twitter. And here you should actually see that as the tweets come in, more and more files will come. So if you have a look at one of those JSON files, you can see that they're very big, actually, there's a lot of things in there. 
So they're a lot more complicated in reality than they are coming out of the sentiment 140 data set that we have been using so far. But everything is in there. So you can see it is the user. So this one is some user called Raju's Guru. He is talking about cabbage tacos. All right. And you can see that the word sunny is in there. So yeah. So this is usable for our application down the road. So now that we have this data coming in, the way this data is produced is that it's continual. So this can update at any given time. Every time that the Twitter app notebook will run, you'll generate more tweets. And obviously you want to make sure that if we have a solution built on top of Spark that reach this data, we want to make sure that we grab the data quickly. So this is an example of a streaming data producer. So I'm going to let this Twitter app run in the meantime. I'm just going to add another query for Rainy. And then we're going to just add another thousand tweets and let that run in the background. doesn't do any harm to let it run. All right. So while we have the Twitter API running, let's recap what we've learned so far. So now you've got to see how we can load some real-time data from Twitter. Make sure that you have set up your Twitter developer API credentials if you wish to follow along. And alternatively, you can use the bundled zip file that I've pointed out if you are not able to generate your own API credentials.